Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this week's CCA COVID-19 series webinar series. Uh, we're excited this week to be uh, talking about uh, the virtual relationship, which is um, perhaps a little odd. Uh, CCA's moved into the virtual world pretty quickly over the last uh, eight weeks, as has just about everybody across the country. Uh, specifically, today we're going to be talking with some alumni leaders from across the country on what their plans are in terms of taking that relationship virtual. Uh, before I introduce uh, our panel members, a few pieces of information. This is uh, being done using Zoom webinar. And so uh, there is no audio or video for attendees. Um, you'll be able to see uh, the panel members and, um, uh, and hear what they have to say, but uh, we limit the involvement or the engagement for folks back. Uh, we encourage you to use the chat function in Zoom if you have a question. Uh, please post them there. Uh, the CCA team is monitoring those and, and uh, if time permits, we'll, we'll certainly get to them. If they're related to a topic we're on, we'll uh, see if we can deal with those. Uh, this session is being recorded and that recording will be available probably in about a week's time. Uh, it'll be uh, sent out to all attendees and will be posted on the CCA website. And there will be an evaluation sent after the event, and I uh, encourage everyone uh, to please complete that evaluation. It's helping CCA uh, continue in its delivery, both uh, in this series, but also as we think about how we're going to do our planning and, and delivery in the fall. Uh, this is the sixth in our series. Um, uh, we've done one a week. Uh, this week we changed tunes a little bit, and we've actually got two uh, webinars this week. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, our national conference keynote speaker, Sylvie DeGusto, will join us to talk about remote working remotely, uh, leading remotely, meeting remotely, uh, everything related to this new reality of working uh, from home. Uh, and so we're thrilled to present Sylvie uh, tomorrow instead of uh, next week at the, or I guess in two weeks at our, what would have been our CCA national conference. Uh, yesterday, we added a new, ser a new session, uh, which will take place on May the 20th. Uh, after the Pre-Dexalance celebration, we'll be doing a, a webinar on the nuances of major gift fundraising during the COVID-19 crisis. Um, and we're going to be joined by a panel of folks, uh, including Pete Lasher from uh, GGNA, uh, who will give some insights into that piece. And next week, uh, our focus is on being in campaign uh, during the crisis. Uh, we're going to tap on the shoulders of some schools that are currently in campaign, but also some professionals who lived through the same or similar circumstances, whether it was in 2008 or after 9-11, uh, and, and what that meant in terms of being in campaign. So lots of things out there from CCA. Uh, today, we're joined uh, by Trish from Trinity College School, um, Aaron from Conestoga College, uh, Annie from the University of Guelph, and Guy from the University of Saskatchewan. A huge thank you to all of you for being here, and uh, we're going to get right into it. Uh, today's conversation is around the virtual and, and what alumni offices are doing uh, and, and what their discussions are like in terms of going virtual. And so we're going to start the conversation with folks around um, giving us an overview of any discussions that have taken place with respect to the virtual relationship and where you might uh, see that heading uh, for your school going forward now into the fall. And I'm going to start with Trish uh, from TCS. Hi everyone, um, I hope you can hear me okay. Um, when we when this first all came up and, and we had to suspend what we had originally planned, our main goals for engaging our alumni and, and our other constituents was, of course, to keep them informed of what we're doing um, as a school and for alumni and keep them in touch with the school and each other. So um, we, we tend to we have a, an alumni base of about 5000 alum that um, we're, we're a fairly um, small independent school in Port Hope, Ontario, and we are trying to keep our engagement as personal as possible. We tend to, our, our staff, there's six of us on our team right now, um, and we know our alumni 
that are engaged very well. Um, we've all been in our office for a very long time. So we wanted to continue those personal relationships virtually as much as possible. So we've, we've um, I know we're going to be getting into a different, different methods a bit later, but um, that was kind of our, our main brainstorming goals and how, how to, what tools we can use to keep those relationships as personal as we're used to and as our alumni are used to. Thank you, Trish. That's great. Uh, Annie, over to you. What's, uh, what are the early discussions like at the University of Guelph? Yeah, great question. And hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Um, what's been interesting for us at Guelph right now, paired with this new virtual experience that we're in and wanting to capitalize on and bring forward, we actually have a new structure in place in our department for our team. And we're also uh, deploying a new business planning strategy and, and including in that uh, starting a three to five year alumni engagement strategy plan. So the timing's actually quite good for us in terms of um, just thinking about virtual. So um, I think for us primarily, it's really about the long game and thinking about, um, you know, we, we talk about how we've immediately pivoted to address all of the current needs we've had, but we're feeling excited about how we, we do just simply take this forward. You know, some key things we've thought about, just, you know, how do we maintain uh, the spirit of what we typically achieve in person through the virtual space? Um, really trying to understand what opportunities are we seeing? Are they new or are there opportunities that we've kind of been thinking about, which just never had the chance to get to that now is sort of the kind of jumping off point for? And then last, um, really just talking a lot about purpose and outcome. What's the purpose of alumni engagement? What are the outcomes we're looking for and how do we achieve that through the virtual space? So uh, just a, one follow up, Did, um, was the whole virtual concept in that new business strategy? Great question. I would say sort of. I think it will play a much bigger role for us. So um, I think later on we'll touch on some of the tools and, and tactics we were thinking of employing. And I think now it's really about how do we, how do we amplify that even more and really kind of direct some energy there? Because I do see what we're doing now, taking that forward, uh, just full stop into the future rather than kind of addressing just short term needs. Nothing like a pandemic to make yeah. us think a little differently. Uh, Aaron at Conestoga College, um, any discussions underway about this virtual relationship and what it might mean going forward? Absolutely. Thanks, Mark. Hi, everyone. So at Conestoga, what we started with is just taking a step back to consider who our alumni are. What do they value? What's important to them? And how can we support them in achieving their goals? So one of the things that is unique to Conestoga is that there's a lot of crossover between the different sectors of our community. So a lot of our graduates are not just people who have a degree or a diploma or a certificate. A lot of them are also employees of the college. They're students who have returned to upgrade um, their skills or explore a new career path. Um, they're also employers who hire a lot of our co-op students and other graduates and there are business partners. So in terms of um, what they need and how we can meet those needs, that has really been the, the focus of our discussion so far. And then we have implemented a very aggressive collaboration strategy with college departments and schools so that we can roll out some of the new initiatives that uh, we'll meet them in the virtual space, but also enhance some of the existing programs that we have to meet their needs in a virtual space. Um, are there some colleges and schools within Conestoga that are more eager to dive into that virtual relationship than others? Well, I don't know if it's uh, necessarily a matter of eagerness but a lot of our alumni are entrepreneurs. So they need help with access to equipment and resources that may not necessarily be virtual. So I think it's a matter of what's really, um, 
you know, what will be most effective. And in some schools, it's very easy to set up a virtual engagement and support system. In other schools, that's going to be accessory to actual hands-on equipment and resources support. Good, thank you. Um, Guy, at the University of Saskatchewan, um, any sort of early virtual discussions as you sort of think ahead uh, into the fall term? Um, well, I have to say that um, the University of Saskatchewan is anchored in a province where personal interaction matters a lot. Community is very, very important. It's a mainly agrarian society um, and human relations are always at the forefront. So what we've been working at over the past two years is actually trying to deepen the relationship with key alumni and that has been very much an in-person approach. In parallel though, there's a natural tension with volume increase and the ability to interact in person with as many people as possible. So we had talked about several times how we could enrich our remote engagement capacity. Uh, we're doing this fairly slowly because we're still in the building up phase of a comprehensive engagement program. I'd like to say just very quickly that the University of Saskatchewan is almost 30,000 students strong, but we have 17 colleges and schools and institutes, so it's very fragmented in how it operates. And there's nothing wrong with that from an academic standpoint but it is much more difficult to coordinate alumni engagement across the system that way because we have so many stakeholders to, to bring it in the fold. Um, so the, the digital approach was not necessarily a top priority, but let me tell you, since COVID, we've pivoted and now we are looking at the future in terms of being mainly, for the long, for the long game, to be mainly virtual and preserving the one-on-one -on -one and in-person interactions where it is more strategic for the repositioning of the university. So a little bit of, of my colleagues, a little bit like any long, longer term game, but Trish as well, preserving the in-person um, and a strategic in re-envisioning of where most of our resources will be spent over time. So uh, gonna move on a little bit, but sort of continue that I, uh, I guess Guy, in that sense of being mainly virtual, what does that mean for uh, alumni events or homecomings or other, what typically would have been face-to-face -face gatherings? Um, is, are you now sort of thinking of all of those being uh, some kind of virtual delivery? Yes, absolutely. I mean, in the immediate term, to tell, to tell the truth, I, I cannot really see how we can plan for in-person interaction with uh, groups of 30 or more for the fall. So our, our, our uh, immediate response is to postpone all of that. It's also great in a way because um, we can use resources we would spend in that direction and start thinking about how we're going to uh, do it virtually or, or remotely. In terms of the, the reunions, um, we're not planning to do a big homecoming uh, or alumni weekend anymore virtually, but some reunions could be either postponed or we could have uh, virtual meetups. And we are talking to the uh, reunion um, volunteer leaders, try to see where they, 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 they want to stand. Uh, and what would, to me, um, remote engagement or virtual engagement be like? Well, first of all, it will have to be more fragmented, more specialized, more surgical, but it can be a lot cheaper and it can allow us to reach a lot of alumni who normally would not be able to engage with us. So I see this as a golden opportunity to expand our reach, to expand our engagement. And the real challenge will be once we're there where we can involve them somehow, how will we deepen the alumni relationship if the engagement is mainly virtual? That is something we're going to need to start talking about once we're in position to, to get going with the, the virtual engagement. Uh, so I want, I'm going to come back to that piece about the deepening relationship and how you're going to make that happen, or at least maybe brainstorm a little bit about how to make that happen. But in terms of the, the, the events, um, and uh, Guy mentioned the shifting of resources. Um, Aaron, what's the thinking at Conestoga? Are you 
now making the new buzzword pivoting to doing the virtual and then transferring the, the resources from what would have been face-to-face -face activities to virtual activities. Absolutely. And one of the advantages that I have at Conestoga is that I had been asked to start exploring ways to do virtual events um, quite a few months ago as the demands on our team and everybody who typically participates in those events have just increased exponentially. It makes it very tricky for people to be at different campuses, interacting with different groups of people um, when there's travel and in-person requirements. So I've already been doing research on those types of things and Conestoga isn't really big on homecomings or reunion type events, but what we do have is a lot of recognition events um, that require in per people to come together in person. So those most definitely are being transitioned over to be virtual. And while we're still exploring what that's going to look like, um, I do know that the resources, specifically financial resources, um, are going to be now directed to student bursaries and scholarship programs. And that will be part of our strategy as we roll out the virtual recognition program is to let people know that the, there is now a huge, a huge component in terms of supporting students. We've maintained that um, sort of respecting that a lot of our grads have maybe had to lay off business partners or employees. They've had to restructure and streamline their operations. Um, and we want people to know that Conestoga is doing that as well. We're being very, we're very financially responsible and we're aware of how the way we use our resources is being perceived. So we want to make sure that people know that as we redirect our resources, it is towards supporting students and other members of the Conestoga community. Um, and one small thing that that we've done so far is to develop a, a digital badge that allows people to share how we recognize them, whether they're an alumnus of distinction or an employer of distinction. It's something that was actually asked for of us by our alumni community that we've been able to put together um, so that we really are redirecting all of our financial resources to student support and um, we're making small steps towards rolling out our virtual transition strategy. But I'm really excited about it. I think it's still going to be extremely effective. Thanks, Erin. I think um, a lot of folks would be in that same boat with recognition events. Um, I know we, we did talk about it a couple uh, week two weeks ago on the student piece, just with student awards and all that other kind of stuff that ended up being canceled. Uh, Trish at uh, TCS, uh, sort of the fall thinking, um, uh, just before I go to Trish, we're getting a lot of questions about virtual events and so we're going to continue the dialogue. I just want to give uh, Trish and Annie a chance to reference um, their thinking on their campuses about the fall and, and what would typically be a, a season of alumni events. Uh, um. Trish? Our, our largest alumni event is actually our reunion weekend, which was scheduled originally to happen at the end of May. Um, when all this came up in, in kind of early to mid-March, we were able to reschedule to the fall um, fairly quickly and, and great response to that. But um, not knowing what the fall is actually going to look like, if we're going to be able to have people on campus, and certainly we usually get a big international audience to, um, to attend that, that event. Um, we are we're not booking anything for the fall right now other than that one event. Um, we haven't opened it up to registrations just yet. We want to see how things go in the next few months. Um, a lot of the people who are involved in that, we, we, have, um, we bring reunions back every five for every fifth class and we usually get about 500 people back on campus for that. And there's, there's a lot of understanding that they're, they're coming to us already saying that they may have to wait until spring of 2021. For the other events we normally would have had um, scheduled, we, we haven't done any of that yet. We're, we're looking at, um, for virtual relationships, looking at smaller groups than we normally would have. We'd, we'd normally have a Toronto branch dinner type thing, but looking at smaller groups of friends, people that maybe don't get together all the time um, for our reunion that would normally happen instead of 
trying to recreate that online, which in, in forms like Zoom, it is very difficult to have personal conversations, even in breakout rooms, it can be hard. Um, we're looking at, at giving them the content that they may have received on campus. So we do archival videos of um, people in their classes that pictures from back when they were in high school or possibly even our junior school, still getting the, the heartstrings, but hoping that we can get them back on campus. Everything is kind of geared to when we can all get together again, but, but having these new experiences. So we're starting um, class trivia nights online and it's all school-based trivia with prizes that we'll send out to them and, and that type of thing. But always looking at forums such as this webinar and, and other discussions with other schools to see where, what people are doing and and what we feel we can accomplish really well. Thanks, uh, Trish. I think um, a number of us, uh, both panel members and probably attendees have been doing uh, virtual trivia or virtual happy hours or virtual something or others in the last few weeks. So lots of thinking around that kind of stuff. Annie at the University of Guelph, um, I just know uh, homecoming is a big, big event uh, in the fall. Uh, mm -hmm. Plus other activities, um, pretty good chance those aren't going to be able to happen. What are you, what are you guys sort of thinking and planning? Yeah, great question. Um, our biggest alumni event of the year is our alumni weekend as well, which happens at the end of June. So we made that decision in March to uh, not move forward as planned, but share very broadly with our alumni family that we were going to re-envision what that would look like. So, um, you know, we sort of have the broad alumni community on the one hand, but then we also have our specific reunion groups to engage. So we are looking, for us, it's the week of June 15th, sort of more of a digital alumni week. And it's a chance for us to test some waters, gather feedback, uh, do some surveying, polls, and really just have a feel good um, experience for alumni. Um, and ideally what I'm looking for us to get out of it is some good data, uncover perhaps some um, new individuals who come forward in some new ways. And we'll definitely be looking ahead into 2021. Um, we have dates set for for several years for our alumni weekend. So just look to, um, you know, in the shorter term, really uh, still be present. And I think Trish, you mentioned this at the outset, still just be very visible with everyone. So that's very much a short term goal. Um, our institution has, um, as a group, uh, officially said that we've, we've got nothing happening until the end of July. That said, I think we all know the fall is, and there's still some unease around that. So I would expect that um, kind of the, the group large gatherings, homecoming included, will be uh, part of that. So we haven't yet addressed homecoming as we're kind of focused first on our alumni weekend uh, kind of pivot, that alumni week digital. Um, but when I kind of think to all alumni, um, I'm so curious to hear what other people are doing in this space. For us, um, you know, I think some events may be better hosted virtually, and this is a chance for us over this next year to explore making that change. And I think in other cases, this might be the chance to explore sunsetting events that we've had a really hard time um, addressing over the, over the years for various reasons. So, um, you know, I think there's sort of a few different approaches to take, um, you know, pivoting to, to virtual, maybe sticking with virtual in some, some cases, sunsetting. And then I think maybe, Guy, you mentioned um, that in-person feel. And I think there are some events that are best held in person and, and to an extent maybe postponing or canceling until we can do certain and particular kinds of alumni events in person is also okay. So I think we're trying to just keep all those options on the table and, and understand per event, you know, again, what's that purpose? What's the outcome we're looking for? And how do we best achieve that? Thanks, uh, Annie. I think, um, so a couple of spinoffs on this. Um, uh, one question asked, um, you know, do, we, do you really think virtual events and reunions are gonna appeal to a broad cross-section of alumni populations? Um, I think everybody's probably engaging folks uh, from many different generations, right, in terms of alumni and um, perhaps some are going to uh, accept those uh, virtual events more than others. Uh, I think 
uh, Guelph's Digital Alumni Weekend in the middle of June is going to be something everybody's going to watch because that's only about a month away. Um, so <laughs> it might be sort of the test uh, ground for this one. But what, what do you think, uh, Guy, with respect to, uh, you know, the broad section of alumni and, and attending and being engaged and how you're going to get them engaged and that next sort of piece in the virtual relationship? Um, well, I'd, I'd like to say that my, my, my experience at the University of Saskatchewan has been that the most successful events are not homecoming or alumni weekend. Um, and I'm saying that because we've had events, in-person events, that brought hundreds of people in a single room. Uh, and they were, they were quite engaged and we came out of there with conversations advanced at several levels. So we, we, have, we have a formula with our group in the traditional sense it works very well because we don't have those events too often, but we do them at strategic moments when there is a message to convey in strategic markets. And we draw a lot of people because our alumni are, are loyal. Some of that will have to come back. We cannot give that up. But in the meantime, I do not expect anymore that what I would call the shotgun approach will work. I do not believe anymore that the future is open to continue to have the one event where everybody comes, where you put 50% of all your resources a year. Uh, I think what we're going to see and the virtual world we are developing right now, all, all collectively across Canada, is giving us the opportunity to have lots of smaller activities, virtual activities that will be more targeted, that will be more topical. They will bring fewer people at a time, but you will have enough diversity of those that you will reach quite a broad spectrum of your alumni constituency. The next question, as I, as I said before, if we are successful at this and we have a plethora of more niche engagement, how do you ensure that this leads to something else? More volunteering, more giving, more um, groups starting up to self-manage. This will be a little bit more difficult. So I do believe that 100% virtual eventually will not be successful, but we need to be strongly virtual and go back to some, to some extent with some of the personal stuff. We need to have the right blend to eventually reach the widest possible proportion of our constituencies, which keep growing every year, right? And our resources are not growing as fast. Yeah, the, the growth piece has always been there on, on the alumni table, right? Uh, adding whatever number of new graduates a year, but uh, not the equal related resources. Uh, Annie, what, um, I, well, you've certainly piqued my interest in this uh, June weekend. Uh, what, I guess the question, a couple of questions. The first would be, um, have you set out some potential metrics or how you're gonna measure um, the success, the engagement, the whatever? Uh, so that's the first, and then I'm gonna, circle to uh, platforms because I think there's a lot of questions out there about what are the platforms that people are going to use uh, to do this. So let's start first with the measurement uh, engagement metrics piece, Annie. Sure. Um, and so I'll qualify um, for us with our kind of transition to this digital week. Um, you know, it's not a one-to-one -one switch here. So we're not kind of taking everything that we would have done, which was about 60 individual events on the weekend and over 30 kind of group reunions and 1,200 to 1,500 people and kind of taking it all exactly to virtual. So just being really smart with what we are doing and, and um, trying out some new things that we wouldn't normally do uh, to capture a new audience. Because I think for us, um, we know that the the committed reunion groups are there and they can do some of those breakout sessions on their own and a lot of them are actually pretty adept at that uh, especially given what's happening i think everybody's been forced to figure out how to do the digital thing um so for us it's really just about um establishing some core messaging around like what does it mean to be university of guelph alumni um and and having just clear messaging, broad messaging, and, and targeted to kind of all audiences. So, um, you know, our president plays a really important role through that week. So, you know, we've got a really awesome video coming together for him. Our alumni association hosts their AGM. So we are taking that virtual. 
Um, and this is a really great chance for us to um, champion those volunteers and shine a light on their great work and also promote that that association um, you know for others who might be interested in getting further involved and in giving back in that way um, so those are probably kind of the two key things that we've sort of taken from kind of in person to a little bit more online um, so for us kind of with the comp team in terms of metrics though to get back to your question i think um, for us it's some of the the, the, the basic kind of, um, you know, we'll have a series of emails, social media. Part of it for us is updates to contact information we'll be pushing quite a lot. That's certainly an area of growth for our institution, making sure we, if we're gonna be virtual, that we've got email for people, uh, for collecting social media handles, that kind of thing. Um, you know, I think the other, you know, the other pieces is views. So we're also kind of pushing people online for, for tours and these videos and it kind of, repackaging I think existing assets is essentially what we're, we're doing but to frame it kind of within the spirit of what our alumni usually uh, weekend usually is so um, pretty standard metrics right now I think well you know in some note taking prior to this I was thinking about metrics and I do think for us we need to have a much bigger conversation and I think that will come to light through our overall planning um, but I think for us uh, you know some of the basic kind of social media click through it's a bit of volume i would say for us right now um and certainly from a qualitative standpoint really curious to see you know what kinds of responses we're getting from people we'll be soliciting people for kind of nostalgic photos memories keywords and things like that so that will also be an interesting indicator for us that's sort of not a hard metric but something that can open up um conversation for some of our team members to follow up in terms of relationship building with people who are kind of coming forward with um, kind of strong feelings and, and kind of positive emotion about the institution. All right, thank you. That's, uh, that's certainly interesting. Um, I think it's pretty, uh, well, certainly from where I sit, it was pretty clear when uh, schools started closing that the independent school uh, folks were far uh, more adept at moving to online academic delivery. Um, they uh, really led, and we heard this in some of our early webinars across the country, but I guess the question now is, Trish, being that leader, are those platforms transferable to this, you know, supporting the alumni virtual relationship kind of thinking and model? Um, and, and if, if they are, what are those platforms? What, are you, what, what has been so successful in the independent school space that then could transfer over to uh, delivery in the alumni space? Um, well, we've had, we've had some good success reaching, um, reaching out to and, and having responses from alumni who we don't normally hear from because of, of a lot of the things that our, our teachers are doing with our students. Our school's still in session. Um, and it was, it was mostly in the regards of looking at co-curriculars, so how to still run clubs and arts and music. And, and they're, they're coming up with some really great um, challenges and things that, that our students can do at home. And we've been able to extend that to our alumni as well. So um, we've, we've got our social media challenges that we've done, but it's also things like um, what piece of art have you created while you're at home? And it's um, what community service are you doing? What are you doing to, to highlight um, your community and it's it's great for both audiences we've found uh, as i said it's a lot of alumni that we don't normally hear from a lot of our younger alum that are, are usually um we're broadcasting to and and we're trying to engage them in person but, but we're we're finding they're, they're sending their amazing um kind of hobby-based activities that we weren't aware of that that somebody would as an amazing artist and, and they've given us a piece to post for our students. So we have this kind of virtual art gallery that we can share with, with students and alum. It's, it's kind of created a really nice um, communication between the two and we're, we're looking at ways to explore that further once school is out. Um, we're, we're looking at obviously uh, the graduating class and, and how we continue to involve alumni in their development as well. So we have a number of of boarding houses at our school. So recently, um, one of the housemasters re reached out to alumni from that boarding house to give video messages to the to the boys in that house to kind of raise their spirits and, and had some great response. But at the same time, the alumni are telling stories and, and getting together in group chats to make videos. And, and it's been 
a lot of faculty involvement that we don't normally see as much of. So um, I think as we go forward and, and depending what it looks like in the fall with academics, if, if we are in a hybrid situation that some kids can be on some campus and some can't, we'll be able to continue that further. But we do have to, we are trying to plan how to continue some of the, this engagement throughout the summer as well. Thanks, Trish. Um, uh, Aaron, um, in terms of platforms, tools, um, what, what, what is Conestoga looking at uh, for delivery? Um, I think we've, we're all using Zoom, obviously. <laughs> um, Microsoft Teams has been uh, certainly touted and used. Uh, there's a very variety of different things out there. What's going to work in this space specifically, Aaron, and that Conestoga? You're on, you're on mute, Aaron. There we go. Can you hear me now? Okay. So at Conestoga, as I mentioned, our events, our in-person events are not exactly like the main focus of our engagement strategy. I would say we have a lot of more communication focused engagement and some of the platforms that we um, have been using are pretty straightforward. Email, social media, um, and we've also started using thank you for donor engagement. We're now going to be transitioning that over to um, support alumni engagement, which I'm very excited about. We also use iWave, which allows us to have some data that sort of supports our how we engage. And um, one of the things that we did was introduce a calling program over the last few weeks. And that really was to thank all of our donors who supported our COVID student relief bursary. But as I've been making those calls myself, um, I've been using it as an opportunity to survey our grads and find out the types of platforms or ways that they may want to engage with us virtually. So at this point, we haven't settled on any specific platforms outside of you know, the ones that have already been mentioned. But um, I do know that we see a lot of people express a willingness to attend events virtually where they may not have attended events in person previously. Um, and also a huge appreciation for virtual engagement um, where you see the person's face, you hear their voice, um, you know, you still have the feel of a, a personal face-to-face -face interaction, even though it's taking place in a virtual environment. So specific plat additional specific platforms is something that we haven't landed on yet, but as we continue to gather information over the next few weeks and months, um, that will help us make an informed decision about which ones to use. All right, thank you. Uh, uh, Guy, any... Um some early investigation or decisions related to platforms as you sort of think about this virtual relationship? Well, we definitely have a preference for Zoom. We've used Zoom and um, uh, Teams. Uh, our university, however, has a, a licensing agreement with WebEx. We're testing it to see whether we can do what we want. Uh, <laughs> that said, um, we were exploring and still are exploring all the platforms out there to understand their capabilities. But as we're doing this, this week and a little bit of the last, we have started to shift our thinking. It's not so much the platform that will define what we're going to do. We're going to decide what we're going to do and then we're going to try to, write, to find the right platform for it. And we want to be different. We don't want to simply do what's been done uh, before, what is done everywhere else. So we need to figure out what will be the qualitative plus to engaging with us as opposed to taking your news elsewhere or engaging with other groups. And, and of course, when the interactions, the personal interaction uh, uh, possibilities will, will reaffirm themselves, we're going to continue to do that. But we cannot count on the alumni um, feeling the monopoly we have to work as strongly in the virtual world unless we have really compelling content and we have an easy delivery method. I would add one more thing on that one too. It's not just about having the right platform and the right program. 
you need to market well. To market well means beforehand, during, but also after. What are you going to do after that? So we are really thinking more deeply about what it is that we want to do before we land on a particular platform or set of platforms. I, th I see uh, Annie certainly shaking her head and, and others as well. I think, uh, I think your point about not letting the platform define what you can do is, is probably a really good point, uh, Guy. Um, what about, um, what about actually delivery methods in terms of webinars? Pod, we've been asked about podcasts, uh, video components. Amy, you mentioned uh, using uh, having the president do a video. Uh, again, in this reality we're in, where gatherings are, well, they're all different sizes are allowed across the country at the moment, but they're certainly not what we would all like them to be for events. Um, how are you going to use different sort of delivery methods to, to hit the audiences in those virtual pieces. Uh, Trish, to you first. Um, we are looking into to doing possible webinars. Um, we've been using Zoom quite a bit with our, our alumni groups, um, but as they get larger and it becomes more of a um, less interaction with them, more of a delivery piece, we're looking at that possibility of webinars. We've been doing a lot of um, videos to our alum our, from our headmaster as well as having alumni um, submit instructional videos. That's been a huge hit for us. Um, it's something that we hadn't done previously, but but um, particularly it seems cooking instruction seems to be a big, a big popular um, thing for our alumni. Um, we haven't investigated podcasts, but but again, we're looking at what our alumni have to offer each other as well. What, what are they, um, we're looking to our year chairs and other volunteers to find out um, when they're in touch with their classmates, what do people want to see? Um, we don't want to put too much resource into our groups and, and these different various items that we may not get any response from. So being a small team and a, and a smaller audience, we want to make sure that we're, we're targeting um, our resources and our time in the right way. Uh, Annie, to you, uh, I think you've probably thought of a, a few of these different methods as you get ready for June, uh, but um, what other than the president's video, uh, what else are you sort of thinking of building into that event, that program? Yeah, so, um, you know, we've been really leaning heavy on our communications team. Um, we would have been doing that anyway, but just taking different shapes. So in the short term, certainly really kind of robust strategy around social engagement. Um, for us, uh, when we take, think about delivery methods, we've been really fortunate the last few years in our department, we've got have an expert in-house around video production. So um, this person kind of works across the department in, in different spaces. So getting some focus in alumni engagement is really fabulous and a wonderful way for us to work with her. So, you know, continuing to utilize that uh, resource uh, and expertise is, is really big for us. So that means I get to do some pre-recorded videos too this year, which will be fun and the first time I'm trying that. Um, I, I think, Erin, you mentioned um, the, the tool Thank View. So I know for us as we move forward in our planning, we were already thinking about acquiring a tool like either thank you or I think allied pixel also has a similar uh, feature which is again this uh, opportunity for for staff to um, record their own kind of authentic video as a thank you to you know whether that's volunteers donors um, you know other stakeholders and kind of quickly send that out in a nice packaged email so that was something we really wanted to make sure the team had access to so you know when we think about platforms I'm really thinking about how do we manage kind of the one-to-one -one opportunities where we keep it virtual, um, there's sort of group scenarios, and then there's kind of the en masse and all of those, you know, again, I think we're all, I'm, I'm sounds like we're all aligned, you know, wanting to kind of pivot quickly to make some quick decisions right now, but really do some good planning, thinking, and analysis around what will be kind of the best fit for whichever audience kind of in the long term. Um, the one thing that hasn't come up, but I'll, I'll mention, we've got a couple of units on campus that have this uh, tool in their shop. So I've got some members of my team that utilize it, which is kind of mentorship platforms that are online. Um, you know, we'd seen mi mixed success up to this point, um, you know, both 
in terms of some student engagement and alumni engagement, but okay. okay. Um, but kind of that uh, ability to facilitate alumni to student connection where often we do some of that in person very well. Um, that's an interesting space for us to explore a bit further. Um, so it's like 10,000 coffees is, is the tool uh, some of our shops on campus have. Um, so, so that's kind of a, a kind of different space in terms of kind of just bringing together those alumni and students. So um, not sure if others are kind of thinking about mentorship platforms and kind of where that plays into alumni engagement strategy, but um, that's kind of another tool we, we have um, on our radar. I can't think of one alumni leader gathering in the last decade that hasn't talked about mentorship. Yeah. Uh, uh, seems to be always out there. We'll, we'll circle back to not just mentorship, but engagement of others on camp around your schools. Uh, go to you, Guy, to sort of talk about platforms and uh, delivery methods, uh, what you might be sort of thinking in your planning there. Good. I, I think uh, just a blend a blend of everything and by that I mean we are thinking in terms of programming series where you have lots of virtual events or activities of a different nature within that program for example we have uh, uh, an educated taste series this is to feature um, alumni managed or owned Epicurean businesses you know, like alcohol restaurants uh, you name it and it's been quite successful as a, a niche engagement tool. Um, but now we cannot really do it virtually 100%. But it would be nice though, if we included, uh, say, a little promo video on social uh, media to bring attention to this activity that, that's gonna happen. And then maybe if it's virtual, it's, it's about uh, some, uh, some recipes. You know, you're, we're all cooking up in our houses. So uh, we have an alum that will, that will give out a session on, on some really cool recipes with, with minimal ingredients. And then we have a follow-up event where you could have a podcast that, that digs more deeply into some of the questions that were raised. So the idea is to converge all forms into a single programming stream to make it as rich as possible. And if we document this well and archive it well, we can curate and repurpose it. Maybe we even do on, uh, in, our, in our magazine, the online version of the magazine, an article that goes in depth about this activity, this chef or the, this, this uh, business. So all tools. So we're really looking at webcasting, podcasting, webinars, uh, traditional social media, which is still gonna, gonna uh, run strong. And in fact, maybe to debunk a little bit of a myth, um, I am not so sure anymore that all generational groups behave significantly differently in their media consumptions. There are various degrees and intensities, yes, but we found, for example, that our Facebook group works really well across all ages. So it's how you drive to it and what you propose to it. So I think that uh, we're not gonna pick one, we're not, we're not gonna pick two, we're gonna explore all, all, and then we're gonna see what sticks with what generational group or regional group. I'm not sure if that makes sense. Uh, I'll assume that the uh, 129 attendees are all nodding, that it makes perfect sense, Guy, so. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Um, so the last, the last piece I want to dive into is about, um, you know, knowledge and expertise within your shop. And Annie, I think, you know, you made the comment, you were lucky, you're working well with your comms team and you've got somebody in there that's in the video space space, which I'm sure helps significantly. Uh, I don't know about the other three, but um, you know, what level of expertise and knowledge do you have within your own shops, your own teams, to, to move to the virtual relationship? And if you don't have that, can you access that on your, at your schools in other uh, areas, other offices, other groups? Um, and if not there, then can you go outside? Um, so Trish, we'll start with you on this one. Um, uh, sort of what level of support do you have inside your own shop and your own school? Um, we're very lucky. We have one of our, our staff members, the, the alumni manager, in fact, is, is amazing with video skills. He, he does um, volunteering with organizations outside of the school as well. So he's been a, a huge resource for, for us being able to release the videos that we want to the point uh, last week we had our um, the school's 155th 
birthday and we're able to engage the entire community with a number of different videos released at different times throughout the day. Um, and it was to a huge success, lots of, lots of feedback from our alum and our parents and, and, um, and current students. So we're, we're, it's great to have that resource. There's, there's other people on campus as well who um, are getting into some of the platforms that we haven't used in our office, but are, are looking into. So we can, as we move into that, we have somebody fairly local that we can we can contact for some feedback and see what they've done already in our communications office and particularly our, our admissions office this has been doing an amazing job looking at different ways of reaching people. Um, we normally get a lot of people coming to campus to look at, at um, admissions open houses and whatnot and they've taken that completely virtually with virtual um, tours and whatnot. So it's things that we can help promote, but that our alumni are also very interested in learning about and, and the videos that, are, that they are using for their purposes serve ours as well. So it's, it's great to have that collaboration on campus. Uh, that's great. I think uh, sort of you, you, you don't forget about the student recruitment or the admissions piece, but the, the they've all had to switch to the video effort, uh, the virtual effort, um, very, very quickly. I mean, this is recruitment time, right? People are certainly in the in the post-secondary space. Uh, this is a high level of recruitment time. And that really had to make a switch quickly in order to fulfill that need. Uh, Aaron, at uh, Conestoga, in terms of uh, expertise in your shop or around campus, uh, what have you got uh, out there to tap into? So at Conestoga, we have 140,000 alumni and I am the only person dedicated to alumni programming engagement relations. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, collaboration for me is key in being able to develop and deliver programs to our alumni. And we have a lot of entrepreneurs in our alumni community. So we do leverage contacts on a regular basis within our alumni community, which also allows us to support their businesses, which is fantastic. Internally, I interact with um, our media school um, to develop video content. We also work closely with corporate communications and they take care of a lot of our social media programming and um, activity. A lot of times they go on my personal social media, like LinkedIn, for example, um, and steal stuff from there and then promote it on the corporate channels. And also our marketing team, we work closely with them as well. And a lot of the stuff that we produce for alumni serves multiple purposes. So for example, we produce an alumni video series that features success stories from across our alumni community. And those videos are used by marketing to recruit new students into programs. They're used by co-op and career to demonstrate possible career paths after graduation um, and to promote co-op placements. So we are, we are, we do work very well. It, it took a few years to gain people's trust and to uh, set up those collaborative relationships, but it does work very well for us. And um, I guess one of the biggest collaborations would be with our entrepreneurship collective, which provides a free online training lab uh, for small ventures, gigs and sales uh, for people who are looking to start new businesses, become freelancers or um, enter high tech sales. So I'd say that's uh, a really one of the most valuable partnerships that has just been been launched and I'm excited to see where that goes over the next uh, few months, especially now that we're in a virtual space. And so, so that's how we do resources, lots of collaboration. Well, congratulations to you, because um, uh, Conestoga sure got a good visibility and, and context in the Ontario landscape for sure. And uh, your ability as the one person to leverage all of that is, is uh, really quite remarkable. Uh, Annie, um, you mentioned your videographer, uh, other offices on campus that um, uh, you might be collaborating with on 
um, this virtual relationship as you sort of envision it going mm -hmm. forward? Yeah, uh, we have a central communications team for the university who has really over the last few years, you know, first and foremost, that you know, they've grown. Uh, we've been thankful for some resourcing there. Um, and their big focus has been marketing. So how do we, similar to I think maybe what's happening at Conestoga, sort of have aligned branding and, and kind of the ability to um, repurpose um, and utilize um, assets across kind of both spaces for the institutions. We've got some great partnership with, with our communications friends. You know, our academic units, we have really great partnerships there as well. Through this COVID period, we have had some academic units launch a webinar series and, you know, how we deliver that to alumni and, and um, bring that forward as some content for them has been amazing. Our business school delivered is in the midst of delivering, I think, one webinar per week, and, and we're having hundreds of hundreds of alumni uh, from business school sign up. And, you know, a lot of those are new people who we hadn't tapped into before. So there's some exciting um, tracking that we can do with those folks to see where our relationship can go from there and how do we capitalize on that. Um, one note I just made for myself that's kind of not a an existing collaboration yet, but I want to put this on our radar for, for growth when we get back onto campus. Our library um, has had some amazing renovations and they've got staff and space for uh, media studios. And so when we think about video and podcasting, just sort of closing that relationship or building that relationship a, a bit more, um, just to utilize those amazing campus resources is one that's top of mind for me. So uh, great relationship with library, but haven't really kind of uh, shared resources in that way yet. But I think that's a kind of neat space for us to um, also for alumni be able to share back with them. Um, especially those who've given to the library just to help demonstrate how we've we've grown uh, to support students in that way. Thanks, Annie. Um, and so uh, I don't I don't want to call it the last word, but we're going to go to Guy for the last comment related to uh, collaboration on campus. We're coming up to the top of the hour and we've been pretty firm on trying to end these at the top of the hour. Uh, folks move on and do other things. So, uh, Guy, in, in about a minute, um, other collaborations you're working on or have been working with on campus? Uh, we have to be very collaborative. Despite the size of our institution, uh, the, the resources needed for us to do that are lacking. Um, so, I, I don't have budget to hire more people, which means that uh, we are going to have to acquire expertise with the people we already have. So as we redeploy people to execute, we're also going to have to give them professional development training to figure this out. Yet, I mean, it's not totally devoid of resources. Uh, there is a, a cost recovery basis operation called Media Project Productions. So they do audio, video capture and, and generation. Uh, sometimes it's cheaper to go outside to tell the truth, but they are on hand and they're in high demand. So it's difficult to have their time. When it comes to expertise on, on remote engagement tools that we talked about, again, we're going to have to acquire it uh, in-house. There will be equipment to do podcasting coming to the central Stratcom team, and we'll be able to tap into that. Um, a word, perhaps, of caution with the networking and interactive platforms like uh, Graduate and 10,000 Coffees and the others that existed in the past. I've been around for quite a while, and they all demand a significant amount of person hours to really work because the you you do something people join and if you don't keep doing things people will either just stay there and not interact or disappear uh, so we are not planning to capitalize on these platforms uh, we're going to look at different ways to be more nimble and do it mainly ourselves one last thing i'm sure all of your institutions have great students with amazing talents mm. so we are planning to tap into our student videographers, our student podcasters, and, and the students that have shown uh, potential and uh, put them to task, and I'm sure they'll be happy to be able to contribute. We'll pay, we'll pay them, of course, but I think it, it might be over time a great way to engage those students and still see our, the quality of our product evolve over time and diversify. That's it. That's a great finish. Um, uh, with respect to the students, um, I think uh, it's not a group we forget about, but it's a group we sometimes don't think about when we sort of start mapping out who we need to tap in uh, in terms of resources or help or whatever it might be. Um, all of us at CCA were uh, very 
Um, we watched yesterday intently on Giving Tuesday Now and the uh, huge amounts of resources and funds that were donated across the country. Uh, almost almost 100% worth for student emergency funds and student support, which is really um, another signal of alumni and their support for what's going on on various campuses and, and what people have had to go through for the last eight weeks. Um, a huge thanks to our panel, uh, Aaron, Trish, Annie, and Guy. Thanks for your hour and your insights today. Uh, we've had a huge amount of questions posed. Uh, tried to get to some of them, but we will, uh, the CCA team will look at those. We'll share them out with the panel members uh, to get some feedback on them, and then we'll circulate them back out uh, once we get the video, uh, the recording for this. Uh, we'll put it back out. Um, again, um, that will be next week. Uh, you will get an evaluation. Uh, please take the time to do that. And I will plug once again tomorrow's webinar with Sylvie DeGusto, uh, again at 1 o'clock Eastern. And then our uh, next week uh, offering um, uh, being in campaign. And we look forward to seeing folks tomorrow and next week. And thanks again to the four of you and to all those that attended. Take care and have a great rest of the week.